Hey, what's up you amazing soon to be hacker? So you want to become a hacker and you click this video. A lot of people have asked me this question. So here's my attempt to answer my number one question. How do you get into hacking? To answer this first, we have to answer a different question in my opinion. What is hacking actually? So uh, we first need to find what we see as hacking and why it will become apparent soon for you guys. I agree in general that the answer to this question will differ for many of us, but I also think there will be some similarities. For me, hackers are just people who like to use tools others use to construct things in a way which helps them figure out how things work or in a way that those tools are not intended to be used. So that definition may seem very broad to you because a tool can be anything but in my opinion, hacking is a very broad term. Hacking can consist in many uh, ways of society. Hacking can exist in general IT. Hacking can exist in um, hardware. Hacking can exist in cars even. Um, there are so many things you can hack, um, but for the purpose of this video, we are going to um, define hacking as general IT hacking. So I'm going to assume that you guys want to get into IT hacking and that's going to also be the basis for this article. Um, it was important for us to define what a hacker is because if we are expecting to use things in an unintended manner, we are supposed to know how they work first. Now, um, for all of the following techniques, if you want to learn them, the best way is to simply think of a useful project and get to designing. We'll go over a an, an tech strategy that you guys can use for that later on. <clears throat> We need to get started somewhere, in my opinion. The best place to get started for me would be to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This will teach you some of the basics of scripting or markup languages, and also some j solid JavaScript, which will help when it comes to things like cross-site scripting or finding other types of, of vulnerabilities. JavaScript is a very useful tool and you guys are going to use it a lot as a hacker because I often tell everybody who's watching that JavaScript is a gold mine. I have a couple of videos about that as well and I mean it guys, JavaScript really is a gold mine. Now if you have these first basic steps down, where do you go from there? So you now know how to make a basic website. You have some cool JavaScript animations, maybe um, you can do some really cool stuff with it. But now it's time to make it interactive. Um, I'm going to make some enemies by saying this, I think, but in my humble opinion, you should start by learning PHP. Now, a lot of people are against PHP because it's pretty old and insecure, but for our cause, that doesn't matter one bit. So why should you pick up PHP? It's simply easy. PHP is easy. All you need is a text editor and a PHP server and you can run your PHP script. <clears throat> and all we want to get is to get you started with the basic concepts of programming. We don't want to burden you with all of those complexities and unnecessary type checking of variables. I mean, all of those things are pretty useful, but not for our cause, at least not yet. You're just getting started don't get ahead of yourself. Now, as for the project, make something very, very useful. PHP will help you make something useful. It will be interactive and it will help you make something quick. And again, all you need is like a text editor and a PHP server. PHP theory itself is out of the scope of this video, but th there's plenty of things you guys can find on the internet. What I would really recommend is that you don't involve any databases yet or any storage, just some user input and do some calculations on those. You know, some basic projects, not too adventurous. Um, storing your data comes next, so whenever user input is involved, hackers like to rub their hands together. Um, these points of interaction are usually where we can find our entry points for our attack. But before you can attack something, of course you need to know how to build it. The reason I would advise you to learn about databases is because you learn about networking and you learn about databases. Both will come into play quite a lot when you're programming and when you're actually making a hacking script. You know, um, when you say, for example, if you insert a single quote into a user input field and you get a SQL error back, you know that you're interacting with a SQL database. 
But if you don't know anything about databases, it's going to be pretty hard to actually know what you're doing. So, of course, learn how to build them first. Now, important, look up why user input is insecure and how you can prevent insertion of that insecure data. We talked about that single quote, can you filter it out in some way? Because of course you want to have an input field where you can enter a single quote. You don't want to filter out all of the single quotes from all of the input fields, that's not done. But there are other ways. Um, now, if you have that working, put your database into a different system because your database is going to start out really close to your script and your PHP engine. But what if it's on a totally different system and you have to get networking involved? That's going to be a lot harder, but it's also going to teach you some of those basics about how to set up ports, which ports to open, what the militarized zone is. <clears throat> so after all of this, are you finally ready to become a hacker? Well, you're getting close. Now the timeline is looking pretty long. I'll tell you guys more about that later. But for now, spend some more time looking at Cisco material. Um, look up how networks work, how firewalls work intrusion detection system, intrusion protection system. There are all these different tools that are being used to keep us hackers out, web application filters, etc. And it really pays off to know what these systems do and how you can interact with those systems because they are not as foolproof as they might seem. Quite a lot of these systems are based on block lists or blacklists. And of course, if you forget to put something on that block or blacklist, it still gets allowed through, so it's still insecure. Now, it will also pay off to look into operating systems a bit more. I don't know what you've been using up to this point, whether it's Linux, Mac OS, Windows. It doesn't matter. Look into all of the operating systems that you can. It's really important because in the wild, you're not only going to encounter Linux systems, you're not only going to encounter Windows systems, you're going to encounter a mix of everything and you need to know how to work with it at least. It's really important for all of these things that we talk about that you have a working knowledge. You don't have to be an expert, but you have to have at least some working knowledge. Other programming languages, other scripting languages, I mean, are also pretty interesting. Python, Ruby, Go, pick whatever, or pick whichever you like. I would highly recommend that you go with Python or Go, those are my favorites. Now, bash scripting will also help you a ton, but don't go overboard again. Working knowledge is what you need. And when you actually move on to hacking, you will have some time to practice what you've learned. Now, getting to know some real programming languages like Java will also help you a ton because you need to get to grips with all of those programming concepts. It will help you find some of those logic vulnerabilities in different implementations of concepts. Now you can actually start looking at some hacking methodologies. A couple of recommendations for you guys again. IPSEC really helped me get some starts, um, Life Overflow helped me get enthusiastic, Stuck helped me get into bug bounties, and Insider PhD always gives me the best information. Um, Zeus CyberSec as well, he's an amazing guy who will give you some really short tutorials, but they are action packed and they're really good. So if you've gotten this far, what should you have learned by now? By now you should at least have a working knowledge of some networking concepts, programming concepts, scripting as well, some Linux, some Windows, some Mac OS experience, at least know what the systems look like and how to use them. Also some security systems like intrusion detection, protection or firewall systems, some database systems and how to all link them together. Now, how should you learn all of these skills? It's very important for me that you take your time Allow yourself that time, guys. I have eight years of general IT experience. I am not even mentioning the, uh, the years that I spent as a kid making crappy websites, making crappy games, doing all of these crappy projects for myself and allowing myself to make those mistakes and make crappy things. It's very important because making mistakes is the only way to learn. After all, Another word for mistake is experience. Some people are faster than others, some are slower, but this should give you a general idea of the timeline. So 
a couple of years at least if you're starting from zero. The best way to learn any skill is to make a project that you need in real life. Don't overcomplicate the project itself. Try to create some small things that will improve your life and design your plan well. I always say that 70% of your time should be spent on preparing your project and the reason I say that is because a well thought out project is worth 10 crappy ones that never get finished guys. If you actually get through your project it will help you a ton not because you're going to use that project daily. Don't get me wrong, I'm no idiot either. You're just going to throw it away probably and write something better after a while. But you need to have made that crappy program before you can make the good one. Now, a general attack strategy that I always use is I actually write down my requirements. I actually take a pen and a paper and not type them. I actually write them down on paper because there's something about that process of putting your pen to paper and letting that ink flow that that hardens the thoughts in your mind. So I take the time to write down my requirements. I then review them myself. <clears throat> then I have somebody that I trust review them for me. I create some test cases for the projects. Notice how we haven't written a single line of code up to this point. Only now do we start coding. And then we test the code with the test cases that we've written before, but also with new ones that we can think of right now. And not only happy day scenarios, but also test your code with unhappy scenarios. Like um, say for example, your code is meant to input numbers, try to input a letter or a special character or anything weird that you can think of. Um, also, if you notice any errors, of course, take the time to go through your code and refactor it a little bit. Don't spend too much time on each project. It's better to say my project is finished because that's also something you're going to experience. You might have some problems with um, finishing an actual project. Now, finishing an actual project is where I would advise that you guys look up the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule states that well, I'm going to leave it up to you guys to look it up because this video is getting long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed some of this hacker tasting. Um, I hope that I've inspired some of you to look up some of these things and to get more familiar with the theory and to actually dive into hacking. Because yes, guys, we do need more amazing hackers like you. Thank you all very, very much for watching. If you are an experienced hacker, I would like to know how did you get into hacking? All of the things that you learned today, all of the things that you heard are based on my experience and my personal experience alone. There is an amazing community in here. You guys have some amazing ideas yourself. So let the beast go in the comments. Thank you very much for being here, everybody. It's my pleasure as always. And I love you. See you all later. Bye.